Well, hello, Stacey Murphy here with a video about how to get the most out of your homegrown food. So this is one of my favorite times of the year. My good friends, John and Ocean Robbins are hosting their annual Food Revolution Summit. And it features all of the latest research on the foods that can prevent chronic diseases and also enhance your health and vitality. And there's a link below this video if you wanna join me over there and tune in. Obviously, they're going to be talking a lot about vegetables. And what I wanna talk about here is how to make your food revolution into a homegrown revolution. So let's talk about how to grow the most nutrient-rich vegetables and herbs on the planet right outside your door. Now, you can eat all the vegetables and herbs you want, but if the nutrients aren't there, what's the point? Luckily, when food is fresh picked, the nutrients are at their peak, so homegrown is a big advantage. Now, here's a trick question. Where are the nutrient-rich vegetables and herbs getting those nutrients? The easy answer is the soil in which they're grown. And here's the trick. Maybe you already know this. Soil is comprised of many things, including nutrients. Soil also includes millions of microorganisms too. So soil by definition is alive because it includes biology. And it is all of these microorganisms that actually feed the nutrients to your plants in exchange for the sugars that plants produce during photosynthesis. Cool, right? So to make your food revolution a homegrown revolution and grow the most nutrient-rich food on the planet, you need two things. You need to have the nutrients available and you need to have soil life to feed those nutrients to your plants. And if you're not growing in soil, you need to breed a similar biological ecosystem. And I'm going to focus on soil in this video. So now there are literally hundreds of ways to garden organically, but there's really only two things you need to check off your list. Number one, make sure all the nutrients are present. How do you do that? Find or make your own compost that has a wide diversity of food scraps and yard waste. So trees pull up minerals deep within the earth. Mineral content of a sugar maple leaf is 5% of its weight in calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, plus other trace elements you and your garden need to stay healthy. That's super cool. And the wider diversity of ingredients that go into your compost, the wider array of potential trace nutrients are available for you when you eat those vegetables. Now, some of us are challenged with not so great soil because we live in cities. If that's you, grab yourself some rock dust, either a basalt or a glacial dust, because volcanoes and glaciers are big events that naturally mine tons of minerals from the earth onto the surface. So these dusts have a wide spectrum of nutrients for your garden. They are dusts, they should feel like flour in your hands and follow the instructions on your bag for application in your garden. Okay, so that's half the equation. You have the nutrients in your soil, but now we need the soil life that's gonna feed those nutrients to our plants. Lucky for us, compost again is a great answer. Good quality compost is teeming with the life that we want, but there are literally hundreds of ways to add that life and you can do all of them if you like because diversity is a great thing. So some people lay mulch on their garden beds, which is essentially like composting in place. It just takes longer than making compost separately. Another way to give yourself a boost of soil life is adding worm poop, which is full of beneficial bacteria. Making compost teas with that worm poop or your compost tea is another idea. There are keyhole gardens that are a combination of ideas of composting in place and growing food. There are literally hundreds of combinations and you choose depending on what resources you have available and what your goals are for your garden. But back to those two basics. You need to have nutrients available and you need soil life and lots of it to feed those nutrients to your plants. So to sum up, the best way to make your food revolution into a homegrown revolution is diversity in your garden. So create an ecosystem that thrives. Create a community of soil life that nourishes you. Millions of microorganisms all working together. I call them the League of Underground Microheroes. And frankly, that's what the food revolution is all about too. It's about all of us learning how to make great choices about the foods that we eat and the growing systems that support life. Together, we choose to create a system that nourishes healthy bodies, healthy communities, and a healthy planet. So that link below is there for you to join in that food summit. I hope to see you there. Peace and carrots.